This week's reading comes to us from Hebrews 3, 3 through 6. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to week two of the anticipation of the promise. If you haven't seen week one, please go back to our YouTube page. It's available there. Um, But this week we're going to be talking about how Jesus fulfills this role of the prophet. This prophet as, as God is restoring this relationship with humanity. So the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. And Moses was the original prophet that God used to speak to his people. And yet Moses, in his own writing, foretold of one who would be far greater. A a prophet who would speak the words of God himself. Jews would anxiously await this new Moses until the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the word of God manifested in human form. The same word that God spoke and all creation came into being at the beginning. He is the perfect prophet. So let's talk about the roles of a prophet. It's to communicate God's will and we see that in Moses. God spoke to Moses directly. He spoke those words to the people as they established worship at Mount Sinai as he as he established the priesthood, uh, which we'll go into next week. It's also the role of the prophet to exhort obedience to God's will. And we see that heavily uh, in the life and ministry of Elijah. One of my favorite stories uh, with Elijah is him going to King Ahab, him him standing up to to a wicked people at this time, going to King Ahab and, and to the prophets of Baal and challenging them, saying, Saying, if, if Baal is the true God, then, then follow him. But if, if Yahweh is the true God, then follow him. Then he, they go on to, he goes on to challenge them to this, to this building of altars. They both built an altar. Uh, the, pro, the prophets of Baal build this altar and they, they dance around it. He goes on to mock them saying, maybe Baal is in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, and then Elijah himself builds His own altar, prays to God, pours water all over it, builds a trench, fills it with water, prays to God, and it's completely devoured, turned to ash before their eyes. And the people return. So it is a very convincing argument that this is the one true God. And finally, the role of a prophet is to inform others of coming blessings or judgments. And we do see that. In the prophet Isaiah. In the prophet Isaiah. Uh, speaking of how beautiful uh, in the mountains are the feet of the, of the one who brings the good news. But these prophets of the Old Testament who in Jesus' time everybody is looking, looking back to. Everybody is, is, is looking for the return of Elijah, of this new Moses, of the fulfillment of Isaiah's promise. And Jesus comes. He's not what they expected, but he begins to explain the Old Testament prophets. He begins to teach as one who teaches with authority the words that they use. And that's because he does have authority. Because he has direct communication with God the Father. So rather than having God speaking through a prophet to his people, you have God speaking to his people in the Sermon on the Mount. And, and, and hopefully that gives you a whole new context for that teaching, but for all of Jesus' words. Correct, direct communication with God the Father because he is God the Son. If we want to talk to God, we speak through Jesus. In Jesus' name, 
we pray. Next week, we'll talk about the role of a priest and how God fulfills that in Jesus and how we can then respond to God and to be faithfully obedient to him. As we end this week, I'd like to leave you with this prayer and blessing. O God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of thy only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And a blessing. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.